In today's video, I'm going to be talking about how I survived my friend breakup as a 32 year old Asian American, and we're covering it right now. Hey, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Kevin. I'm actually a YouTuber, former pharmacist, and entrepreneur. And on this channel, we usually talk about everything from productivity, personal development, and entrepreneurship. But today, it's going to be a little different. We're going to go a little bit deeper. We're going to talk about friend breakups. Believe it or not, one of my friends sent me an email pretty much breaking up with me. It's a really, really weird way to break up with a friend because in my opinion, you should probably talk things over, but you know, I respect my friends, my former friend's decision and all that as well. To be honest with you, I was never really quite good at endings. Luckily for me, I haven't had to deal with too many friend endings. I probably only had to deal with like three or four in my life, honestly, that were really, really close. This one being probably the third or fourth one. And I just want to talk about how I'm kind of dealing with it, what I'm kind of going through at the moment. I think a lot of the issues actually stem from my abandonment issues with my dad. And that's why I hold so many of my friends so dear to my heart because I've always kind of looked at as like friends being the family that you choose as well, not being the ones that you're given, you know? And whether it was like business, platonic or romantic relationships, it was never really easy for me. But recently I've come to terms that, hey, endings are just a necessary part of life. And so relationships, they mean a lot to me. Whether it's turning up in Vegas or just grabbing a bite to eat and just chopping it up, they mean a lot to me. But on a deeper, more selfish reason, it fills that void of me feeling alone. And on the positive side, I think sharing experiences together with the people that you care about is actually one of the most rewarding parts of life that I've experienced. So when a relationship doesn't work out, whatever type of relationship, it hurts a lot. And sometimes like, dude, I honestly break down into tears sometimes. While it does hurt sometimes, I always try to take a step back and look at it as an opportunity for growth for myself. I remember after my dad passed in 2018, I was just fascinated by this quote by Ray Dalio who says, pain plus reflection equals growth. So in today's video, I wanna talk about how I deal with necessary endings with my relationships. And if you guys are going through a friend breakup, romantic breakup, business breakup, hey, maybe this can actually help you. And if you have any tips or suggestions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments below as well. But let's dive into them. The first thing that I always do is text my support team. You know, think about it back in the day, my support team was always my friends, right? Because I was 17, 18 years old. Like I didn't have money for a therapist or anything like that. And I would go to my friends half the time. And while talking to friends can make you help you feel better and stuff, it's still not professional help. And sometimes your friends just don't know what to say. And so it wasn't until this, sum this, this summer where I actually decided to invest in therapy and in business coaching as well. And I wish I did it a lot sooner, to be honest with you. It started with my mom being diagnosed with a brain tumor. And then later in the year, I ended up losing one of my business partners. And the whole COVID thing, it just forced me to isolate. And I just started working 24-7. It consumed my life. And because of also COVID, I lost a lot of my healthy coping mechanisms. I wasn't doing jujitsu anymore. I wasn't hitting the gym. And honestly, I wasn't seeing my friends anymore. And my anxiety was starting to skyrocket where I was getting early morning insomnia every single day. And when I didn't get sleep, guess what? My energy levels took a hit and I just started spiraling hard. I mentioned these things not for you to feel bad for me, but I just wanna show you how easy it is to go down the spiral, right? And how one thing can lead to another. And for me, I just felt like I lost complete control of my life. My health, wealth, and relationships just felt like it was all stripped away from me. And the crazy part was, it wasn't even the COVID part that was the worst part. It was all the effects of COVID that kind of affected these things. And that's when I invested into like my support team. When my friend recently broke up with me, the first person I texted was actually my my therapist, right? And one of the reasons why I started seeing a therapist is that she always reminds me to check in emotionally, ask me how I'm feeling emotionally too. And she forces me, believe it or not, to kind of process these feelings. And I know it sounds kind of woo-woo and stupid sometimes, but it's like, that's the number one thing I don't do. I don't really process my feelings. I just keep on moving, going forward as well. The second person I texted was actually my business coach. And 
my business coach coach always reminds me of the path I'm on and reminds me that I'm not crazy. You know, sometimes one of the best investments in your life is just to get some external validation in your life. And I think that's that's part of the journey. These people don't know me. These people know me, but they don't know know me like that. So when it came to my romantic, platonic and business relationships, they're always the first to know about my breakups. And it, it's also taken a burden off my friends. It allowed my friends to be my friends. And don't get me wrong, I love my friends. I love sharing stuff. And they, even if I did share stuff, they would probably listen to me because they're really great. But at the same time, I just don't want to burden them. And is professional help expensive? You betcha. But, you know, honestly, I don't know where I would be without some sort of professional help if they were not supporting me. So super grateful for them. The second thing that I did when my friend broke up with me was that I started focusing on feeling rather than doing. You know, it might be an Asian man, man type of thing or just like a male type of thing, but we always want to fix shit, right? One of my strength finders in my strength finders 2.0 is actually restorative, which basically means I love solving problems. And so I automatically always try to figure out what's wrong and try to resolve it, right? But for some reason, I always go into Asian dad mode when I feel like things are wrong. And what I realized through things like therapy is like I automatically go into work mode. It's kind of like, you know, how people drink or smoke or do drugs or stuff to just numb themselves from pain. That's pretty much my my cocaine, I guess, <laughs> if you want to give an analogy. I'm a workaholic and it's my choice for numbing, numbing myself. I think it started when I was a teenager, when I was just going through a lot of shit and it distracted me from feeling my emotions. But there's only so after so many years, there's only so much that the body can handle. And honestly, I would go through extensive burnout. And as a result, it never allowed me to resolve my emotions from uh, an emotional level as well. After I text my support team, I just I just try not to interact with my friends or do anything like that. And I force myself to sit in isolation. No friends, no texts, no videos, just sitting there in my feelings. Sometimes I break down into tears, not this case, but other times, especially with more romantic relationships, I feel a dark pain in like my heart. I'm not sure if anybody can relate, but that dropping feeling. And sometimes I'll just go for a drive, you know, and just to get my mind off of things and just to really have some more time with myself. This most recently happened with my romantic relationship where I started asking myself like, hey, why am I so unable to open up emotionally to my partner? Will anyone ever love me again? These are thoughts that kind of stem through my mind as well. I think a lot of time, like people think about these thoughts, but they never vocalize that they think about these thoughts as well. Logically, it doesn't make sense, right? Like why waste time and sit there when you can do something to make you feel better about it? But I kind of forget that I'm not like a robot like Elon Musk or John Danaher from the, <laughs> the Death Squad, right? I'm human. One of the things I realized from my therapist is that feeling our emotions is so important for the long-term game because it allows us to endure pain and resolve our problems emotionally. That way, I can also, after kind of having my emotions out of the way, I can make the best decision logically as well. So that's something I've been doing, focusing on feeling rather than doing. Now, the third thing that I did when my friend broke up with me was like I wrote down the lessons that I learned, right? One of the three steps is the hardest step for me because it's sitting down, writing, writing all the lessons learned and figuring out what I can do forward as well. I think for me personally, accepting feedback is one of the hardest things for me. Um, I think like from an emotional level, I, I associate feedback with my father and my self-worth as well. And it's really tough to get over sometimes, but I'm trying trying every day to get better at it and i think i have gotten a lot better over the years um i've been doing everything from hypnotherapy books my therapist as well and so and so when my friend broke up with me too i was thinking he's he just basically spewed all this all this stuff that he was experiment experiencing as well and some of it was new some of it was not new as well and i just started to think like hmm what could I have done to kind of prevent these situation, this situation or how could I have been a better friend? I came up with three things I could do better in the future. The first thing is be more adaptive to different communication styles and be a better listener in my relationships. Sometimes I'm always not the best listener, um, especially when, when 
there's certain personality types that aren't as vocal about what they need. They won't say like, hey, I need this from you. And to really take the initiative to ask instead, like, hey, what do you need right now? And doing that. Sometimes for me, it's just like frustrating for me to just like try to figure shit out. But I forget, I can also take the initiative to ask, right? People might, might not always be in the state to like tell, tell me what they need as well. So there's that. The second thing that I also like in terms of lessons I realized from this friendship is like, I should be a lot more selective with the type of relationships, what I want. And this kind of goes back to the first thing as well. It's just like open, honest communication without feeling like I was being attacked. Right. I felt like a lot of time, like, um, what I notice sometimes is that I need to be very, very careful with the people I spend my time around with. Right. This friend, I don't believe is a toxic friend or I don't like to use those type of words and stuff, but he was definitely going through his own own stuff as well. And I I really did appreciate him during our friendship and stuff like that as well. But I just took a s step back and just thought, well, what kind of friendship do you want, Kevin? And it's kind of like, oh, I want an open open relationship where like these issues that my friend was having against me don't bottle up and that we can have an open conversation. I want conver I want a relationship where I don't feel like I have to walk on eggshells in terms of like having another person be offended or blow up on me as well every single time. And third thing is like, I want a relationship that we can focus more on the gratitude things, right? On the more positive things rather than our faults as well. Um, it's a just a huge spiral and it just sucks up so much time. And just being an entrepreneur, and just being in like on the entrepreneur space, man, it is so draining that you can't allow you, like I literally spent the whole one whole weekend just thinking about this as well. So I need to be more careful about that as well. And the third thing that I learned in terms of a lesson is that, hey, all relationships come to end, accepting of natural en endings for any relationship. Whether we will like it or not, your relationships will always end because we always forget that we die. Whether we choose to end things or we actually, or nature takes its place, all relationships come to an end as well. My, my business coach, he always reminds me too, is like, hey, is there anything that you can do? Go chain. Is there anything that... And so these are the three lessons that I learned on this relationship as well. And I also have like lessons that I learned from my previous romantic relationship as well. And so I always try to think like, hey, is there anything that I can change going forward? And the answer is always yes. I mean, this is like kind of like why I name like why I'm so fascinated with the concept of Kaizen, because it's a process. It's a continuous growth process through pain and reflection you can get 1% better, right? And sometimes, like no lie, sometimes I lose faith in the whirlwind just because I don't, I in the moment, I don't feel like things are gonna get better, but that's where my support team, number one, comes back into play because it reminds me of like, it reminds me to take a wider view of things and not look at things like so doom and gloom as well. I think one of the things that happened after the the friend breakup is like one, I messaged, uh, I sent an email back and voice message to uh, my friend as well, right? My friend didn't want to talk about it. He just wanted to break things off. So I sent him a gratitude type of thing as well. And not gonna lie, I felt like I kind of wasted my time doing that. But, you know, I think it's important to end off on a positive note. And that's just the person I want to be, right? And... So I, I told them like, Hey, you know, like I understand where you're coming from. This is my perspective on certain things. Right. But I'm not trying to take away from your reality, but you know, like we, maybe we just have to disagree and stuff. And I just said like, Hey, thank you for everything that you've done for me. I really appreciate this. I really appreciate that. That's kind of like paraphrasing and all that sort of stuff too. But that's, that's why I did. And I, then I thought, this you know like let's i want to like i said i want to spend more time in relationships where we appreciate each other more so 
I just started pick up the phone, found three like I, I just messaged a lot of my close friends who always check up on me. I was like, hey, you know what? I always appre I appreciate you, man. Recently, I've been going through a br friend breakup at the m moment, and I don't think I say how much I appreciate you, your our friendship enough, right? So I started doing that as well, and I think that's one of the best. It's ironically made my other friendships a lot stronger as well. So finally, you might be asking yourself, well, how do you handle endings, Kevin? And I think losing or ending relationships is never an easy thing. It's just a part of life, right? And I don't think, no matter how many relationships I go through, I don't think it really gets easier, y'all. <laughs> like, I really don't. And so recently, I read this book called Necessary Endings. Um, it's a pretty solid book. Um, but it was recommended by um, this guy, Mike Kim. But it reframed the way that I looked at endings as a necessary part of life. In this culture where you just like have like ride or die friends and all that sort of stuff, like, you know, I think it's important to really take a look at all your relationships and see which one serves you and see which ones don't serve you anymore. And not to say that you need to cut off those people, but um, I think it's important to just like think about like where you're headed, what you need and who are the people that are taking away from your life than, than adding as well. I think one of the best things I did though was like instead of just reacting right the, right away to my friend's message, which is a like I said a horrible communication channel in my opinion, you know take it for what it is. I think in person's always best. Phone comes second, um, and then just leave the rest. But I think one of the best things I did was just take the time to pause, reflect, and really invest into my support system because. It's a lot easier than navigating everything by yourself through trial and error and all that. You know, am I still a little torn up about it? A little bit, yeah. Um, but will I be okay? Absolutely, right? Because, but it doesn't take away from the pain that I go through. And so I would love to kind of hear from you. How do you guys deal with your necessary endings? Let me know in the comments. And if you guys like this video, I also had a video a while back about, about um, going through a breakup or romantic breakup at 32 year old as an Asian American you might really really relate to this if you relate to this video and I also had another video on how I um, started my therapist back during the summertime so you should check that out I'll leave in the cards below finally consider subscribing to my weekly newsletter if you want more of a one-on-one -on -one connection usually I talk about productivity personal development topics like this and entrepreneurship as well and i send my weekly favorites as well fun fact i actually sent this way before i actually shot a video on it so if you want the sneak peek let me know anyways guys stay bold stay kick ass peace